Hello, everyone, and welcome to our uh, latest webinar, Ensuring Convenience, Grocery, and Liquor Stores. My name is Anae Agostini. I'm CEO of CID Insurance Programs. Our instructor today is Teresa Cochran. She's a commercial underwriter who specializes in these classes of business. And uh, last but not least, I want to introduce Jacob Cole, our marketing coordinator, uh, who does, makes all of these webinars happen and go smoothly. So let's get started. So, of course, most of you have been to uh, attended a webinar before. You know that you'll be muted and, and able to hear but not speak. Uh, but your voice is important to us, so please pose your questions in the chat room. And you can do it throughout the webinar at any time, and we'll stop and answer them as we go. Again, there'll be a short survey afterwards, and we would really like your feedback um, so that we can, you know, get better at what we do and deliver the best experience for all of you. Now, let's talk about objectives today. We just Really, this is a basic webinar on how to better understand the convenience grocery and liquor stores exposures. And Teresa is going to talk about what coverages these class of business need, what's important, what do you need to pay attention to. And then she'll also teach you how to obtain a competitive quote. Uh, and that's if, if you deliver good, uh, complete submissions to us, we can quote. Um, we can get you better competitive quotes, and we can quote much faster for you. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Teresa. Hello, everyone. I hope everybody's doing well today. Um, so first, I'm going to start off with a brief overview of what a convenience liquor and grocery store are, which I'm sure we've all been in several of these. Um, but it's a retail store selling food, beverage items, and miscellaneous household supplies for off-premise consumption. Um, typically, a carrier is going to classify a convenience and grocery store um, as 3,000 3, square feet or less with no more than $500,000 in annual sales. If the store happens to be larger than 3,000 square feet and um, earning more than $500,000 a year, they're going to fall under the, the supermarket class code, which we can also help underwrite and the underwriting is going to be very similar to what we're going over today. Um, some, some additional exposures that convenience liquor and grocery stores may have are hot food sales, deli sales, lottery ticket sales, gasoline sales, auto repair, and car washes. Um, a lot of auto repair risks we see that may be attached to a convenience or grocery store are you know, smog stations, oil and lube shops, and on the car wash side, um, it could be, you know, a drive-through self-service car wash or even a, you know, a hand wash uh, detail shop. Um, also, another exposure that these risks may have if they own the building that they're, um, that they're running the business out of is they could also lease space to, to another business. Um, so maybe you go into a convenience store and there's a little deli inside. Well, you know, maybe your client doesn't own that deli. So um, just something to, something to talk about with your customers because then they have a lesser risk exposure. Um, so what other eligible exposures can we write for these convenience and grocery stores? Um, we can do your new ventures, franchises, stores that are open 24 hours, you know, again, the cooking exposure is fine in the grocery stores, the gas sales. We've seen a lot of risks with um, a lapse in coverage, you know, due to COVID. Liquor receipts, we have no problem with those. We can write up to 100% because we can write the liquor stores. Check cashing is something we see quite often. Um, it will knock some carriers out, but we definitely do have markets for check that um, that can accommodate check cashing and the propane tank exchanges is also an eligible exposure. If they're doing propane tank filling, that one's a little bit harder to find coverage for. Um, but so far, I do have at least one market we can take those to. And again, another eligible exposure that's not listed here is the leasing of space to others. 
All right, coverages available, and these are coverages specifically available for the grocery and convenience stores. Um, so you have obviously your property and liability. We're able to rate monoline if they're only looking for monoline liability or monoline property. Um, lately in the marketplace, it's harder to find carriers that want to offer property coverage. So I have been getting a lot of submissions in where they're, where they're just needing monoline property, which is fine. Um, a lot of these carriers, you know, they're running your, they're running crime scores, they're brush mapping, um, especially in Washington, Oregon, and California. Um, that's happening a lot. So just something to, something to think about. Um, if you need a monoline market, you can definitely come to us for that. Uh, liquor liability, uh, which we're going to touch on a little bit later, but that's an important one to offer um, customers that are selling, selling any type of alcoholic beverages. Uh, salt and battery usually comes along with the liquor coverage. We can offer equipment breakdown. Garage keeper's liability is something that would be needed if they do have a smog station, an oil lube shop. Um, they're offering uh, car wash and detailing. And then the umbrella limits that they may, may be required by their, by their landlord. Um, I'm going to break down the property a little bit because there's a lot of different property exposures that convenience stores um, and grocery stores may need depending on their operation. Um, spoilage coverage is a big one. Uh, they have all these refrigerators. If there's a power outage or a mechanical breakdown, spoilage is something that you may want to recommend they, um, they get coverage for. Uh, they may need coverage for gas pumps. Um, a lot of gas pumps have a canopy or an awning over it. And then your, your typical business income, building coverage if they own the building or are part of a triple net lease agreement. Um, your BPP coverage. And they also may need sign coverage. A lot of these stores have nice lit up signs out front and they can cost upwards of ten to twenty thousand dollars. So it's definitely uh, something to bring up with your customer. Um, theft coverage is a big deal for a lot of these businesses. And if they have a central station burglar alarm, we should have no issues offering them theft coverage for grocery and convenience stores. When we get into breaking down liquor stores, it gets a little bit trickier. Um, but definitely if they have the central station burglar alarm, the building has been updated. We should have no issues offering that, that um, special form coverage with that. Moving on to the beer, wine, and liquor stores. Um, some carries refer to them as just beverage stores. We can definitely offer coverage for new ventures, risks with on-premise tasting. Um, I recently went into um, a mini mart that has a little pizza shop in there and they were, I went to go pick up pizza for the kids and they're offering tequila tasting there. Kind of random, but it does happen. So it's, it's worth asking your customer about that. Risks with delivery are definitely eligible. It's kind of a new thing um, that Uber, you know, all those at DoorDash, they're offering deliveries for from liquor stores, um, but that is something we consider along with the liquor coverage. 24-hour stores we can look at, and we have both admitted and non-admitted markets. Um, it just depending on the makeup of the risk. That's where you know I'm going to I'm going to take it to the best market we have available. And the coverage is available uh, for the liquor stores. They're gonna they're they're going to be similar um, to the convenience store in Delhi. Um, obviously, no garage keepers coverage is going to be needed for these unless they randomly have that exposure. Um, and the property needed for the the liquor stores isn't going to be is not going to be as extensive as what would be needed for convenience or grocery store. Um, you know, we'd be looking at the BPP building coverage, business income, sign coverage, uh, glass coverage. Um, that's really the most I, I see on my end for, for the liquor stores. And then again, your liquor liability, which is going to be a huge exposure. Um, and again, I'm going to touch more on liquor in a moment. Your salt battery, your equipment breakdown. Um, there's a lot of refrigerators at these places. So asking about, you know, refrigeration agreements, um, that will give you a credit with a lot of the markets. So that's definitely something to ask your, your clients. 
and umbrella limits are available if needed. Now, touching on the liquor liability, um, this is definitely a, cover, a coverage that's either overlooked or your customer thinks they, they don't need it. You know, they want they want to save, you know, five, six hundred dollars. They don't they don't want to get the liquor liability. Um, the claims are are generally low for liquor, but when they happen, they pay out a lot of money. So it's definitely worth trying to upsell your client because the GL form is not going to cover any claims arising out of the sale or service of alcohol. Um, the biggest risk that I have bulleted here is selling to a minor or an intoxicated person. Um, so again, it's, it's, it is an upsell. A lot of places don't want to have it, but it doesn't cost them a lot of money because typically they aren't serving liquor on the premise. It's only for off-premise consumption. Um, but you do want to see if they are doing any any of those on-premise tastings, um, which is not, it, it's not going to jump up the premium a lot. Um, so please go over that with your customer just to make sure that they have all their bases covered. Next, we're going to go into, you know, we just listed out some of the classes of business. Um, you know, there's uh, tobacco shops. We can help with those. We see some seafood stores, some, you know, meat markets. Uh, we can do 100% gas stations, the supermarkets that, you know, I touched on earlier, the hookah stores. We can even do hookah lounges, which actually falls more under the restaurant class code. Um, and your your convenience stores, liquor stores, grocery stores, yep, all those we went over. Um, again, if you have any questions, please, please type them in for me. Uh, but these are the main classes of business we see under the convenience grocery um, and liquor program. The requirements or what I'm requesting for you in order to get a competitive quote out as fast as possible, a court application, the 125 and 126 for the liability and the 140 for the property. Um, and remember on that 140, try to separate all the property coverages they need, whether it be you know, for, for the gas pump, um, the awning, the canopy, um, the signs, the glass coverage. If you could separate all those out on the cord 140, that would be very helpful. Um, we also have a convenience and grocery store supplemental. Um, I compiled a bunch of questions from all of my different carriers and put them on a one-page supplemental. Um, I try to make it as easy as possible. Um, if anyone's not comfortable filling out a court application because there's so many different boxes that, you're, that you think you need to fill in, even though you really don't, uh, we have a recorded webinar on our website, so please look over that. Um, watch it when you have five, ten minutes. It will be very helpful to you. You'll be more comfortable filling out a court application. Loss runs. If you can send me loss runs, that would be great. A lot of my admitted markets want to see those loss runs in order to offer terms or offer credit. Um, there's a lot of trip and fall exposure uh, exposures when it comes to the grocery stores and convenience stores. So loss runs are a huge plus for me. If you can't get them, but you know they've had coverage, throw on that information on the uh, Accord 125 where it asks about uh, prior coverage. Because any credits I can add on on the front end, you know, the better for your client. Um, and separate, separating out the, you know, the food sales, the liquor sales, the hot food sales, uh, the gas station sales, as well as any other, any other uh, additional exposures they have going on. Separate, separate those out for me um, so we make sure we are rating for every exposure they have on the premise. Uh, my grocery store supplemental does separate out a lot of those. Um, so it is a great tool to take with you um, when you are having a conversation with your with your customer. And Teresa, I'm just a couple, yes, a couple of questions. Is this an audited? Are, are these audited policies? They are. Yes. Okay, so that maybe you want to yes. speak a little bit about that. And 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 the condition of the um, the marketplace right now for a lot of these classes of business. What should the yeah. brokers be sharing with their insurance? Yeah, so right now the, li the liability is really easy to place. 
um, it's really on the property side where, um, you know, the, the, underwriter, the underwriting is tightening up uh, because, again, they're running the, the crime index scores at the area. Um, they're brush mapping, so a, a lot of people are coming to me for just monoline property um, and trying to keep the liability with, you know, whatever company that they have a direct appointment with. Um, and on the auditing side, some carriers are auditing sales. Um, so, you know, they're going to the bookkeeper, they're getting the sales, and so that's why we need to make sure we're as spot on as we can be when we're quoting these, these risks. Good information. Okay, I'm, I'm going to uh, finish up the last uh, few slides that we have here. Uh, thank you, Teresa, that was great. The, um, this slide is a proposal template, and this, this is a, a great concept. We don't want you um, using or sending to your insured what we send you as a wholesaler. That quote is for you as the broker, and your job is to present a professional proposal to your insured. So we, we have created, and, and we use these in our own company, uh, not these specific ones, but ones that, that we, you actually receive from us, uh, they are a quote uh, templates. We like to use the term proposal when you're dealing with the insured. It's a little more professional. And um, you'll see that we've created this template, that, and they're all on our website. You can go ahead and just fill in the pink areas. Uh, you can even have someone assisting, you know, prepare quotes for you because it becomes that easy. Uh, and then you always keep your original template and then save, you know, each proposal that you create to the name of your insured or whatever uh, file name that you choose to keep track of them. Uh, but this is a great way. These are Word documents. You take them, make them your own, put your own logo on them, change them around, adapt them. So this is a great tool for you to use. We've got a number of different proposals on our website so that um, that you, because not all, not your proposal can't be the same for every coverage or every class of business that you're you're proposing to. Uh, so um, you'll see a, a number of them there that could be helpful to you. And if you can't, if you don't see what you need, uh, let us know and, and we'll create one for you. Uh, and, and again, this is a great way to secure the binds. Uh, and it, you, as I mentioned, you can customize the agency information. And then the templates are on our website at cidinsurance.com. This is a great way and we try to make it as easy as possible for you our website has a lot of tools and I encourage you to go under the broker tools section and check everything out uh, last but not least uh, not all of these policies can you charge a broker fee uh, but uh, but not admitted policies uh, and our the market is turning a bit hard Many of you may or may not have actually experienced a hard market, but the, the COVID situation is really pushing the carriers uh, into what I call post-COVID chaos. And, and there's been a lot of claims unanticipated uh, uh, as a result. And many of them are, you know, we're going to see rate increases are already happening, carriers pulling out of certain markets. Uh, and... So a lot of things are going to, you're, you're going to see a trend of more not admitted business because that's where a, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of the, the uh, carriers are going that direction. You're, you're, you're going to be going to wholesalers because the, the admitted market does not want the class of business any longer. So when it's not admitted, uh, any of these classes of business that Teresa can quote for you, you uh, we have a, a broker fee agreement. And you can see it. This is a template, and again, it's it's a template that has the pink areas again, and you just you fill out your agency information, and it's a way of disclosing having the the insured sign off on your broker fee that you charge. You can see this one was $150, and they're basically saying that it's full. You're basically agreeing. They're agreeing that it's fully earned. You know, if the policy cancels, they don't get this money back. Um, and then it, there's a little bit of liability protection in, in there for you as a broker. So this is a great tool. This Again, this is on our web, website as well. 
under templates um, under the broker tools uh, tab. Um, so, and again, you can customize this with your own information, make it your own, um, just like the proposal. Um, and so that concludes our uh, webinar. Um, if, if you have any questions, please uh, chat them in, uh, um, and we will be so glad to answer those for you. Um, oh, I, I, we do have Renee, I, I do. I see. I see a question. Uh, oh, yeah, will Sam. you accept? Will you accept completed via uh, accept forms completed via DocuSign? Absolutely. Via DocuSign is fine. If your client signs the document, takes a picture of it, and sends e emails it to you, we'll accept that. Um, any way to get a pen signature, we're we're, we're definitely going to take. Um, but yes, DocuSign is is a great is a great um, a great way to get those forms signed. Okay, and if there are any other questions, please type them in and we will answer them. Um, as I mentioned, the broker tools are at cidinsurance.com. Um, Teresa's ready uh, and, and to to uh, quote your apple your your submissions. So please uh, send those over to her. If you have any questions, she's very responsive, either by email or by phone. Um, we do answer our phones, and we never shut down during COVID. So our office has been functioning and, and uh, up and running. So we didn't we didn't really um, have a hiccup during COVID. Uh, so I want to thank you for joining us, and we look forward to doing business with you. Have a great day.